Oh, hey! Welcome back, guys! This is our second video on do-it-yourself pro um, hunting decoys. This is Rhea. She is now the co-star of our, of our show. Say hi, Rhea. I like to call the mascot, but that's not good. That, 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 that not going to be nice to do. That's not nice. This is, she's actually my service dog, and she's also our baby at the same time. And we're going to see how she's going to handle uh, doing some crow hunting this season coming up. But this is our girl. She's a very good dog. And she's, she really is my best friend. And uh, she's going to be on the show a lot with us. I promise you that. Because she and me and her are so close. Oh, shit, baby. Go play with your toys. You know, but today, guys, I did promise you in our last segment that I have a, uh, a unique design for um, a crow decoy. And um, I like to call it the magic Pro decoy. And the reason I call it the Magic Pro decoy is because it is in fact motorless. And there is no motor attached to it, but the, uh, uh it, well, Rhea wants to play at the moment too. Um, but there is no motor attached to it, but uh, it in fact has uh, motorized wings that move on their own. And uh, I'm going to show you guys just how to do that here in just a few moments. Okay, so the first thing we need to get started here, and uh, um, again, I, I back the chair up so I can stand up and show you guys exactly what we're doing here and how we're going to go about doing it. Um, the thing, the first thing you're going to need to get started here is just remember, these are the same decoys that we made in our last video. See, here they are, same ones, just like here, same ones, except you're probably wondering, why is there a dowel rod to it? And I'm going to explain to you why here in just a second. Okay. Now, I designed this a long time ago, and it works great. And um, it does not require any batteries. It does not require a solar system, nothing like that. All you need to get started with these are the same materials that we used in our last video. It's the same exact material as the foam. And we have our dowel rods. We have our glue. We have our sharpener for our pencil, and we have our pre-cut out decoys that are ready to go. Now, the first thing we're going to do when we get started when you're making one motorized decoy is I'm going to first show you why we put these dial rods through here and why I designed the way I designed it. Okay, the first thing I'm going to show you guys though is this. When you put the dial rod through, you have to put an additional piece of foam to secure the dowel rod right here. You glue it to the decoy. And you do all this prior before you paint. So when you spray paint, you get everything nice and black. Okay? So you glue these tabs on first after you put your dowel rod through. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that here very short. Okay? You take your quarter inch dowel rod and you decide on your decoy where you like it to go. Now, don't put, put it down here or anything, guys, because that's not where their wings are. Their wings are located in this vicinity right here where their shoulders are. So that's where we want to put the dowel rod. You don't need a drill or anything like that. You could do this all just with your hands. And I've already pre-punched the hole with the dowel rod straight through the foam. Now, this is just the ordinary foam we get at the dollar store. You punch this, the dowel rod through, just like that. Very simple. And then you eye it to see, to make sure you have an equal amount on each side, or if you have a measuring tape, you can measure it. Me, I like to eye it, because I always go by my eye, I trust my eye, and so I go by eyeing it here. And once I got it in position of where I like it, then if you look down here, we have leftover foam. See, leftover foam pieces that we have cut away with our hobby knife and what we will do with these is these will be your lock locks for securing the dowel to the decoy see and all you have to do to do that is cut yourself a piece just like this it doesn't have to be fancy it doesn't have to be rounded or perfectly square it could be anything because we're going to paint this black so it's going to blend right in with the black and then what you do with these you hold your dowel rod where you like it positioned and you slide these down. You punch a hole through them. You don't need a drill or anything. You just work it on and you punch it through. 
and you slide it down, just like that, okay? Now, when you get it to that position, where you want to go, hold it with your fingers, your two fingers. You can hold it down and hold the dowel rod in place. So, oops, so when you flip it over, you can work on this side now. Now we're gonna do the same thing on this side. This is just a normal square piece. I've already pre-punched a hole through, and we're gonna put it on the dowel rod and slide it down the dowel rod against the deep boy. Now we're gonna re-eye it and hold on to the little pieces with our fingers. See, you can use any fingers you put you list. Just hold on to it so you can eye it. So you can see which side has more and if you have to adjust it. You don't need any tools. This is all done by hand. So once you eye it and you get it in position that you like, then you come over here, take your glue. Again, this is the same super glue that we used in our last video, the same kind of super glue. And what you're going to want to do is set your decoy down, slide this out a little bit, your first one, while you're holding everything in place with your two fingers or three fingers in the back. Take some glue, squirt it down in there, just like this. Get in there. This one actually is running out, so let me open this brand new one real quick, guys, for you. And I can do this all one-handed, too. I've gotten used over the years. <laughs> so we're going to spray some glue down in there, just like this. Slide the piece flush up against the decoy and hold in place. At the same time, keep your two fingers hold in place here. Now remember it has a 10 second delay so we hold it in place until it sets. Not that it hardened but it's just going to set. And that's all we want it to do. And then once this side's dry we will work on this side and do the same thing that we just did on this side. And then the dowel will be secure through the decoy. Okay? Because the glue will hold it all in place along with these pieces as braces that we've decided that we put on that's going to help with the next part. Now if you look, everything is straight. Everything is straight. See? While this one's drying, we will set this one aside. And we're going to use these in our hunting videos, guys. These same decoys, we we're going to use them. Now this one I've already set up for you. This one's already been pre-dried, ready to go, so I can show you how to install the wings. Now, to begin with the wings, I'm going to show you here in a minute. But before we, we start the assemblation of the wings, I want to show you what the decoy actually does. Now, bear with me. We slide our wing on. And then what do we have? Watch. The wind pushes the wings for you. No motor, no electric battery, no solar panels, and you can put them amongst the flock and they will work. They will attract the crows to come further down. And even if, even if, there's no wind for a brief moment, these wings always remain up like this from gravity. So from aerial view, it looks like the crow is either stretching his wings or drying his wings. So it doubles as a visual decoy for you from the air if there's no wind. But as soon as the wind pick up, you have your motorized decoy. Now, we're going to finish this one here on camera while this one here dries because we don't have time to wait for that one to dry and need for to set it up. So I'm going to explain as we assemble the wings, I'm going to explain how we set this up. Okay? Now, the same kind of foam that we've used to secure this, this scrap foam, nothing special about it. You take the same size dowel rod that you've used for the base of the wings. You punch a hole through it, just like this. Then, 
pull the little pieces off. Sometimes a little piece of the paper come through. And then what you're gonna wanna do is just slide it on. You position it where you like it, not too close to the wing, and then you glue it. Now, let's start with the position of how to do the, uh, um, excuse me, let's start with how to assemble the wings, in fact. And it's very easy to do, and you can do it <coughs> with the same materials that we started making the decoys with. Now, what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna show you, I've already cut out one the other for the other side of this decoy. Everything's already been cut out. It's just, this is my, this is no special design. I just freehand drew this. And you can draw your wings any way you wish. Any pattern, you can add the, the, the feathers underneath. You can even do this with geese and duck decoys as well. It works incredibly well for snow geese. And I will show you guys later in another segment how we're gonna make snow geese decoys just like this that we will use Okay, and when we travel further up um, Colorado to do some goose hunting this season coming up. So, for, um, but back to what we're doing here, I have cut out the wings for micro decoys. As you can see, no special length or anything. The only thing you want to focus on doing is with your straw. Now these straws here are from a restaurant. You don't want to use the kids' straws from like Walmart, right? That they're too tight. They won't allow the wings to spin. You want to have free movement around that doll. So when the wind blows, the wings will, will blow freely, okay? So what you're gonna to wanna to do is get yourself some restaurant straws. Just go up to your local Denny's or your local restaurant and ask them if you can buy some straws or have some straws and they work great. And what you're going to want to do is once you cut out the size of the wing that you want for the dowel, these dowels are the same length as they come prepackaged for you at your local craft store. Okay, these are only 12 inches. Okay, and we use them for the base of the legs and we use them for the wings. Okay, and nothing else has been purchased extra to assemble this decoy. And that's what I'm excited to show you guys about because it's going to save you a lot of money. Now, once you have cut out your wing and you're happy with the sides, you want to make sure, guys, as you look here, for an example, you want to keep it on the inside, you see? You don't want it hanging over. You want to have uh, that, that play in there so when the wind blows, it turns, okay, uh, freely on its own. Now, don't worry about any noise it makes because the crow call that you'll have playing will be so loud, they're not going to hear that when the wind blows, so don't worry about that. So once you've decided how length you want your wings, you come over here and you assemble it like this. You look at the length of your wing and then you cut your straw. You want to leave a little overhang of your wing. You do not want it flush up against because the foam will rub up against here and prevent it from spinning. So what you're going to want to do is cut your straw as I have already pre-done for you to show you just a little lip that's all then you want to make sure you measure it where it's in the center you want it to be centered okay when you before you decide to glue it okay so once you've done that once you've done that excuse me take your glue and run it right along in between your two lines. Excuse me one second, guys. It's a brand new bottle, so I have to break this seal again a little harder. So we're gonna run it along here, just like this. See? Take your straw, it's already been pre-measured and everything is ready to go, and place it into the glue. And again, you have a 10 second delay, so make sure you position it exactly where you want it to go with the little overhang because you don't want it to dry without that overhang. Once you have it in place, hold it down in between your lines. See, I'm holding it in between the lines to make sure that it remains straight. And once you've done that, allow it to dry overnight, especially for the wings. But you can hold it for about 10, 
about five, ten minutes, you can just sit here and relax and make sure it holds on because you want a good seal because your wings, you don't want your wings flying off when you're hunting. So while this ring is drying, we're going to set this aside. And what we'll do, guys, is I'll show you here on this one I've already pre-done for you exactly what we're our goal is going to do is put this wing on this side and then this decoy is ready to go. Now, to show you very quickly how you set up your flying decoys, your, your decoys with the wings, the, the, I call them my magic decoys. How you set up your magic decoys is the same way you would set up your other decoys that we've already done showed you how to attach your clothespins. However, on this particular model, you have to set up clothespins in the back as well. And I will show it to you in a moment here why we do that. Let me take out this decoy to show you. Now, I've already pre-glued this one in place. Now, as you can see, there will be another one that will go here to hold this dowel rod in place. Now, we have one glued on the tail. There's a reason for this because our flying decoys, you want them higher up on an angle, as you can see, much higher up to all look like the crow is expanding its wings as you can see here as I'm demonstrating excuse me everyone now when the purpose of putting the second one in the tail is for support when the wind is blowing you always put your decoys facing the wind if the wind is coming at you you set up your wind decoys this direction do not set them up like this because they'll get blow over you want the wind to blow over the wings so when they move that's how you, that, to get the crow's attention. So you want to face them into the wind, the flying decoys, okay? The magic ones. Now, once you've got your, how you want your, your magic decoy to be positioned, then you make sure you always put a second crow's pin in place to secure this dowel rod. You put one in the tail, as I'm going to demonstrate here, for better support. When this is in the ground, this tail one will give it more support so the wind don't blow it over. That's the whole purpose of putting the one in the tail. This one is the main support to act as the legs, but this one will prevent it from blowing it over because once again, what are we doing guys? We're facing our decoys into the wind. This extra dowel rod will prevent it from being pulled back and thrown from the wind because here in Colorado we live in a valley and we have a lot of wind and I I am certain that these decoys are going to do very good here just as they've done in Michigan so I wanted to show you guys how to set this one up if you have any questions please don't feel free to comment down below I'll be happy to answer them I'm here to help you and I'm here to help you save money at the same time showing you my tricks and my trades over the years I've learned and from the man who taught me how to hunt so these are our, I call them our magic decoys. The wings will flow free on their own and without no batteries and without no solar panels, none of that heavy stuff. You can set them along in the flock, okay, as you're setting up your decoys and they will produce, produce a lot of movement and bring a lot of attention in and they work very effectively. And we're going to be using these in our, in our hunting videos coming up this season, guys, I promise you. So. That will be it for today. I hope this has been helpful for you. Again, if you have any, any questions or need help assembling your decoys at home, feel free to comment down below and I'll be happy to help you. Until then, guys, have a great holiday and we love you. Bye.